Hey YouTube, it's the test lead, and today's video is how to create the perfect test plan. So here's the situation. Your company has a new feature that they want to release to production, and they put you in charge of testing it. So you're thinking to yourself, what now? Well first, you should create a test plan so that your team knows what the plan is as well as what their roles will be for the plan. This video will cover what is a plan and why is it needed, as well as the eight steps to create the perfect test plan. So first off, what is a test plan? A test plan serves as a blueprint for the testing practices. So first off, what is a test plan? A test plan serves as a blueprint. It is usually created by the QA of the team. It is a document that details all the different aspects of the plan testing that will set up your team to have proper test coverage in a successful test cycle. The test plan, by definition, should inform about the scope, approach, resources, and schedule of intended test activities. This means the test plan should include a testing schedule, clear objectives for each part of the schedule, the testing strategy that you wish to implement for your testing practices, any resources that will be needed for the testing practices, and finally, time estimations for how long each part of the test plan should take. When creating a test plan, you want to make sure that it's concise, readable, organized, and accurate. So why is a test plan really needed anyway? Many reasons. As I stated previously, it serves as a blueprint for your team. This will not only be used by the testing team, but also by people not on a testing team such as business, product owners, developers, and customers. Having a test plan tells everybody what they should be doing and when they should be doing it. Also, any test plan that is effective and successful can be reused later as a template for future test plans. That's how you improve your process and become more efficient. Now into the nitty gritty, how to create a test plan. There'll be eight steps. First, learn about the application. Before you can test anything, you should learn about what the current application does and what new features will be added. Identify who the target audience is for the new feature and application. Find the end user or customer and see what information they can share with you about it. If you are unclear about anything, now's the time to ask and make sure to take notes from your analysis. Step two, create a testing strategy. Your testing strategy is very important. It will be used as a high level instruction for the testing scope, which is what will be included in the testing and what the costs and efforts will be to effectively test. Creating your testing strategy has multiple layers. First, you want to clearly define the scope. Detail first the hardware, software, and middleware that will be tested in the scope. Then define what will not be tested, the items out of the scope. By defining these items, everyone from the stakeholders and customers to the testers can clearly know what will be included in the testing efforts. When defining the scope, you should take into account the customer information, the customer requirements, the application being tested, and the actual personnel that's on your team. Next, you want to identify the type of testing that will be required to be the best test coverage. Do you need functional testing or non-functional testing? Or maybe both. Do you need performance testing? What type of functional testing do you need? System test, integration test, are unit tests suffice? After, the risk analysis should be done. Identify the possible risk that can come from testing. Type deadlines. Identify that certain types of testing may not be able to be carried out because of it and how you will plan to try to help minimize the risk. The final part is try to figure out the who and when for your application. Who will be testing it and when will they be testing it? Identify the certain types of testers that will be needed for the testing. Do you need manual QAs? Do you need automation engineers? Maybe your application requires performance testing. Make sure all this is clearly stated as well as when this testing will occur during the testing cycle. Step three, list the testing objectives. You must clearly define your goals of the testing efforts. High level, the goal should always be to limit the amount of bugs that get released to production. In a perfect world, there will be no bugs, but realistically, we'll try to limit them as much as possible. An unhappy customer means no business. Identify all the functionality and features that you wanna test. Each test that you make should have a goal 
or purpose for why you're testing it. This helps to make sure that all your tests are relevant and you don't have excess tests that are redundant. Step four, declare successful testing criteria. Your testing criteria should discuss how each objective will be met. This will help you document your progress of the overall testing efforts. You should have suspension and exit criteria both defined. Suspension criteria is a set of criteria that if met, testing will be paused until those criteria is no longer fulfilled. Then exit criteria is if this criteria is met, testing is finished. An example of this may be that at least 95% of all test cases pass. Step five, figure out the resource allocation. List out all the different resources that you'll need for testing. This includes human resources, as well as any hardware or software. Do you need some developers, some QAs? List it. Need certain operating systems? List it. Need a specific testing tool? List it. This list is very important because it dictates what will be used going forward. Step six, identify your testing environments. A testing environment is an environment setup that mimics how real users will be using your application. This includes the software and hardware needed to execute your tests. You may need different environments set up for different phases of your testing. Does your application need a certain amount of memory on a machine to run properly? Does your application need to be tested on all web browsers? If so, make sure you have environments where all this is accessible. And that's another part of testing. Don't ever assume anything. So let's say, oh, it works on Chrome, it works on Firefox. No, I actually go and test it to make sure. Step seven, create a roadmap. Now that we have all the little things figured out, we need to create a schedule and estimate how long we think each part of the process should take. From this, you should be able to create deadlines for different parts of the project. Take into account possibly adding extra buffer time in case bugs are found throughout the process, and you need to go back to development and then test again. This will be the guide that everybody as part of the testing team will use to identify different milestones along the project. Finally, eight, the test deliverables. To wrap it up, your testing document should include all the test deliverables required to complete testing. Test deliverables are a list of documents and components that need to be developed and maintained for the testing efforts. Deliverables also need to be documented throughout the testing practice. We can break down these deliverables into three different sections. First, before any testing occurs, we should have test plan documentation, test case documentation, and test design specifications. During testing, including testing scripts, test execution, test data, and test execution logs. And then finally, after testing is complete, the testing results, defects, guidelines, and any release notes. Now let's wrap it up. In conclusion, writing a test plan is a very important task and is very challenging. It's important that if you need any resources, you ask for them in the beginning. That way you give other teams time to allocate those resources for you. At first, it's gonna seem very overwhelming, but once you do a few test plans and you find a template that works for you, it'll be a lot more seamless process. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want another video just like this, please take care. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below. And hey, don't forget to learn something new today.